Hello and welcome to another episode of the MLS UK show. I'm Henry Hewitt and as always I'm joined by... Elliot Holman, hope everybody's doing good. A bumper episode today, which following our last episode, the season preview, is really something to be said. But I can promise you, it's a bumper episode, lots to look forward to. We have got Apple TV, MLS season passes, MLS... 360 host Kevin Egan on the show to preview MLS 2024 and it's the moment you've all been waiting for this is the most messages we get all season is asking about Poppy's kit reviews we had so much on the last episode we couldn't fit it in this week every team every new jersey is being reviewed by Poppy my wife if you're new to the podcast every year she goes through the kits reviews them in her own unique way isn't it Elliot like why have Seattle come dressed as the pitch because they're green? Or I don't like red shirts, but then in the next sentence we'll say, oh, I really like Chicago Fire shirt. We don't know what we're going to get. Yeah, and congratulations to uh, the Buzzy Bees on their MLS Cup. Um, that's the one of the most iconic uh, poppy kit reviews we've ever had, the Columbus Crew uh, jersey. Um, yeah, it's humbling. This time every year, it's really humbling. MLS starts, uh, me and Henry think, oh yeah, you know, everyone really wants to hear from us about MLS. Yeah, we know what we're talking about. They don't. They're just here for Poppy's kit reviews. It's the most popular segment we do in the whole season. So bring it on. Yeah, um, she was going through our YouTube comments and uh, on our social media this last week going, uh, oh, another one asking where Poppy is. Oh, someone's commented on that saying they said it's next week. So uh, no, she's been keeping up to date. So that's uh, that's kept her busy. Uh, it's the first one as a mum as well. So has her, you know, has her thoughts changed? Has she, um, you know, she now, does she like red? Does she not like the buzzy bees? We'll have to find out. So uh, we'll be doing that later on in the show as well as being joined by Kevin Egan. Uh, but first, Elliot, we've had our first weekend of MLS. MLS is back. Um, I mean, MLS was back the week before when Inter Miami played or the, the couple of days before, but then according to MLS, it was officially back at the weekend. Um, and it didn't disappoint. Lots to talk about, even though there was a lot of draws as well. There was a lot of draws. And I think this has been, um, this has been brewing a little bit over the last few years. The defenses have got a lot, lot better. Uh, in recent years, we've talked about it a little bit. Um, the you know the goals conceded, unless you're Toronto, uh, have really redu- uh, really reduced in recent years. Um, and even Toronto didn't concede this uh, in this opening weekend. So um, I think there's okay. It's, it's week one, so let's not get carried away. But I think there's certainly some evidence that's been stacking up over the last couple of seasons that defenses are getting a lot stronger. Um, we're not just pumping all our money uh, from the roster caps into wingers and strikers and forwards. Um, you know, we're, we're starting to think about Hugo Lloris, goalkeeper. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at centre backs coming in for big money. So yeah, tides are changing. Yeah. Although we have still got Colorado to work, bring us back down to earth with poor defending and going four nil down at half time in their mass match. Chris Amos, ladies and gentlemen, in Phil Neville versus Chris Armas, Phil Neville won that one. Um, right, well, well, let's talk a bit about that first weekend. But uh, we do need to point out, Don Garber this week has said that he doesn't want um, MLS correspondents, MLS journalists to just talk about Leo Messi. So that is the last time today. He calls it lazy, so we're not going to be lazy. This is the last time we'll talk about Leo Messi. Uh, but his team into Miami... Uh, have played twice so far this season, picked up four points. Um, what have you made of Miami so far? But don't mention Messi. Uh, okay. Um, I'm I'm happy with that, to be honest. I think I, there's so much coverage. I think it's great for the league, but there is so much coverage of just their games. Um, and even like BBC Breakfast News over here um, were showing MLS highlights the other morning. I was like, this has never happened before. And then I just realized it was it was only Miami. I wonder why. Um, so, uh, well, I, I said in the first episode, I think they've done well, of course they have, to secure the names that they've secured. But then we needed to see how it was going to fit together. Um, there were certainly moments, there was flashes, and we know because every outlet on uh, social media is desperate to post the video. We know that there were flashes of magic from Miami, from Suarez, from he who should not be named, 
you know, even from Busquets pulling the strings further back. Um, and, and Robert Taylor as well, <laughs> the, unlikely, uh, the unlikely superstar. Um, but I, I also think that we need to see a lot more of them. We need to see them tested. We need to see them when he, who must not be named, is not on the field. We need to see them when Suarez is having to have a rest. Suarez doesn't look mobile. He looks good, but he doesn't look mobile. Figure that out. Um, and so... It's the level of intrigue, I think, around Miami has gone up, if anything. We've seen them twice, a win and a draw. They're undefeated, fantastic, good start. But you could tell they were, they were annoyed they didn't win that game against Galaxy. And that's the mentality that these superstars bring. Yeah, you're right. And I think it's, uh, it's been an interesting start. We'll talk more about it with Kevin uh, Egan a little later on. But, um, you know, to get that win and then follow it up with a last minute equaliser against LA Galaxy. They, they've, they, they've already shown the mentality that, OK, there's there's a few fine tuning bits they need to do. Um, you know, I've not been convinced by them so far that they are going to go and win everything. Well, I think there's been enough so far to show me that, yeah, playoffs is not even a conversation unless those players get injured. Um, and then to progress further and try and get MLS Cup. Um, you know, but I think, like you said, Suarez is, he's had an okay start. I'm surprised with the amount he's played, to be honest. Um, you know, you know what you're going to get with Busquets. You know what you're going to get with Alba. Um, can't think of anyone else to talk about with, uh, oh, sorry, yeah, Robert Taylor, of course, gets got their first goal. Um, I had a sneaky suspicion he was going to score the first goal. I think all the, the eyes were on other players. And when I saw he was playing, I was like, well, he's Messi's favourite teammate, isn't he? So uh, I, I did suspect that he would score against RSL, and he did. You just mentioned Messi, so um, you can hang up the call now and leave. Um, I know for a fact, because... Uh, Orlando, my team, face Miami this weekend in the Florida Derby. I know for a fact, I know for a fact, and you can clip this and you can post it on Sunday morning, I know Messi is going to score his first goal and I know it's going to be probably assisted by Suarez with a back heel from Sergio Busquets and uh, off the bum of Alba who started the move like and it's going to go viral and it's going to be shown over and over and over and over again and I'm going to be sick of it and I just if I see Messi chipping it over that guy lane on the floor one more time I like that's that's what it's going to be um and I know it's coming I know it. bring it on can't wait although that was fun I did like when he did that uh, right, let's move away from Miami then uh, until the kit reviews which they do get reviewed of course uh but um Let's talk about uh, last season's MLS Cup uh, finalists, I guess. LAFC and Columbus. They both won. Uh, Columbus beating my team, Atlanta, 1-0. Um, you could argue it should have been more, but at the same time, as an Atlanta fan, losing 1-0, just 1-0 to Columbus, possibly would have taken that. Um, and LAFC beat Seattle uh, with some new nets. I was quite impressed. A very old school netting in LAFC. It's such a Henry and Elliot thing to pick up on, isn't it? Um, first of all, yeah, you're right. Uh, Atlanta, it's kind of a how the mighty have fallen, isn't it? Atlanta only losing 1-0 to Columbus. I agree with you. I think, fine. Um, you know, you, you've you got easier games to come and, and hopefully you perform a little bit better. I can't believe there was only one goal in that game. Not from watching it, but from just... Looking at last season, Columbus, Atlanta, they both scored so many goals. Um, I was sure an over 1.5 in this game was was absolutely going to land. Um, obviously, Guzan had other ideas. Fair play. Um, but I, I I think you're right. I think it's a good start. And um, LAFC, <clears throat> winning at home, important. Uh, Seattle are going to be one of the challenges for me. So I think that's an, a, a much bigger result it's a bigger result for LAFC than it is for Columbus um I think if we're starting to look at those games um debut from Larice didn't get a clean sheet uh MLS UK player of course um but yeah I think I think that's a big result for LAFC if I'm honest yeah I was uh I was impressed it was a big game I mean you can't judge much off the first game of the season of course but for LAFC to go and beat Seattle um, and look quite settled, I think, was a, a major milestone for them and a, a good way for them to start the season. Uh, same with Columbus as well. You know, a lot of pressure on them this year. 
uh, and I think they've they've started very well. Another team that started very well is Minnesota. They won at Austin, and they now have a head coach. Finally, the last team in MLS 2024 to get a new coach, a new head coach, is Minnesota. It's Eric Ramsey, who comes from the Manchester United uh, sort of coaching department. Um, this is a bold move, isn't it, for Minnesota? He's going to be the youngest ever head coach in MLS history. He's younger than you and me, for a start. Um, and they've had the good start. We said on the preview, so we'll go back and watch that if you haven't seen it already. But with Minnesota... We don't know really what to expect. They have got some good elements up front, but it maybe need filling in around the rest of the eleven. Um, but a win at Austin, who, who have problems themselves, but a win at Austin is a great start for him to come in for. Yeah, I mean, you win in without a coach. Why a point one? Um, but I think I think they if they were going to have to play a game without a coach, I think. No disrespect to Austin, but they're not going to trouble them as much. You know, if they had to go away to Columbus without a coach, I think you, you've certainly got a bit of a problem on your hands. Um, so Austin Austin are not going to be up there for me this year, unfortunately, again. Uh, so Minnesota, three points on the board. Ramsey comes in and uh, they're already uh, three points from an, three available. So solid start. Uh, so we're going to normally, as you know, on the MLS UK show, we would talk a lot more about the weekend's action and looking ahead to this next weekend. But we've got that much to cram into today's episode. Uh, we're going to leave uh, looking at weekday one there. Um, just before we go on to Poppy's kit reviews of the West, I want to just bring this up and, and, and see what you think of it. Um, a few bits that have been in MLS this week. Uh, the first one being that uh, Eddie Q, who is the Apple's Senior Vice President of Services, has, uh, has come out and said he wants MLS to sign more stars. Um, what do you make of this? Because we've kind of said on the podcast the last few years, we, it's been refreshing seeing MLS looking at sort of a younger approach and trying to bring the players in who they can then sell on to Europe. This is more of the old school MLS of bringing in the aging superstar. Where do you stand with this? I think it's the messy effect. They're seeing... The Apple, Apple have invested a lot of money in this deal. Uh, there's nine years left of it. And they've seen the effect that, you know, bringing Messi to the league has had and, and everybody else that Miami has signed. So understandable that uh, anybody at Apple is thinking, well, this is fantastic. We're selling we're selling uh, a season pass, you know, and people are buying it because they want to watch these players. Absolutely makes sense. But unfortunately, that isn't how things work. Um you know, Sky Sports don't tell Manchester City who to sign. It's not. It's just not the way that that we operate. Um, Apple have done a fantastic job with Apple TV season pass with MLS. It's especially here in the UK. It's it's made it an absolute joy to consume MLS here. Um, but I'm sorry, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, Apple have a massive say on it, and I can understand why he has said that. And yeah, the messy effect is, you know, Apple aren't going to look and go, oh, well, if we get some players in who uh, could then become massive in Europe, then people are going to buy subscriptions. It's, uh, there will be people who will do that, but not the mainstream who they want. So I can understand why he said that, especially about Messi, um, you know, and, and it's then, it's interesting to see that Kevin De Bruyne has been linked this week uh, with a move to MLS in saying, oh, he'd prefer MLS over Saudi, Luka Modric. They, they're going to be looking at loads of different markets, aren't they? They'd, even bringing Loris in could get them some extra subscriptions from France. Obviously, you've got the Messi and then Busquets and Alba and uh, Suarez for different areas uh, of the of the world. You know, that I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if a big English player goes over and plays there at some point uh, in the near future to get this market. So, yeah, I can understand why he said it, but, you know, I'm like you. you. It's I, I guess MLS does have a little bit more of a say, uh, or, or Apple TV will have more of a say of who signs for who than Sky Sports with uh, Manchester City, but still, um, yeah, I thought it was a very interesting comment, especially as MLS is kind of in recent years before Apple been saying, no, we want to move away from that tag. Now Apple's in, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll go back to that tag. But then Don Garber don't want us to talk about Messi, so uh, maybe maybe he's he's trying to bite back at that. Yeah, I think uh, I I think it's interesting to see. It's like having a backseat driver, isn't it? Apple they've paid their money and now they want to tell you where to go. 
Uh, right, so let's move on to part one of Poppy's Kit Reviews. It's what you've all wanted to hear. Regular listeners to the MLS UK show over the years have uh, fallen in love with Poppy and her unique uh, ways of describing the kits and reviewing the kits for, at the start of each season. Uh, for those who don't know, Poppy's my wife. Uh, we've just had a child, so maybe she's a bit more tired than she was in previous years. So we recorded this the other day. I'm going to play it now to, to Elliot. Um, just before we start, so we're going to start with the West. Um, is there any kits that have uh, you've taken a fancy to, Elliot? What are you liking this year? The bold Barcelona RSL kit is certainly eye-opening. So is the Seattle one. The Seattle one is busy. Um, so I, they're the ones that maybe jump out to me not a fan of the dallas one um so that yeah they're the they're the three that i've got like quite a strong opinion on um yeah well i predicted last week that she'd like the dallas one so we'll find out very soon if she did uh, of course the atlanta one i've got a soft spot for and i think it is a genuinely good kit um i, I mean the away ones i think are the uh the better ones it can be more creative with it um the minnesota one i think is great um you know, you, you're looking down the list. You know what? Genuinely, I don't mind the Orlando one. I think the retro kits this year, you look at Orlando, San Jose, Vancouver, you know, with the retro badges, I quite like them, uh, actually. Um, what else? Yeah, Portland's I like. I'm just looking down the list here. Um, yeah, there's, there's a few. Houston's is an interesting one. Very Orlando vibes with that one. I don't mind that one. Uh, but yeah, probably Atlanta's my... I've got to stick with Atlanta for me. <laughs> I, yeah, I... The Orlando one, I'm not I'm not sure on. I, I respect the USL heritage, but it's not a great badge. And I don't really like the kit. I like it more in person. When it was when it was first leaked, I was a bit like, oh, that's, that's bad. Um, but I like it a bit more now I've seen it. But um, it's not... It's not the best, and it's replacing a really good Orlando away jersey as well, so a little bit sad about that. Yeah, well, famously, Poppy didn't like that jersey, so uh, we'll find out later in the show whether she does like the Orlando one this year, but we're going to start with the Western Conference. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll be able to see the kits as she talks about them. We'll put them on screen. If you're listening on your podcast provider, um, I'm getting these off MLS's website, so you can also go on there and, and look as poppy uh, talks about them alternatively why not go and watch the video on youtube to give us an extra view on there it's up to you i'd rather you watch it on youtube but it's your own preference um right so let's do the western conference then so we're going to start with austin and austin's kit this year it's uh you've got your your standard your green shoulders and arms uh but the, the main top is kind of a creamy sort of color kind of white but a bit off white so let's have a listen to see what she thinks of this it's like a cream shirt. It's not even white. So yeah, it's been put in the wrong wash. And I, to be fair, I do quite like that colour green. It's like almost metallic. I do like that. It's just a meh. I don't, I don't think it's meh. I think meh is very harsh. I think it's really nice. It's really on brand for Austin as well. I like it. Yeah, I, it's, I think compared to other kits, it's not the most... Um, flamboyant shirt so I, I get that but yeah so i can kind of get where she's coming from with that i i I'll, I'll say that um right let's move on to colorado then now if you haven't seen this one the colorado shirt is quite an interesting shirt actually it's of course standard colors that sort of um uh, well what color would you call that a burgundy shirt a sort of shirt the, the burgundy, dark red yeah. shirt um it's it's kind of an optical illusion kind of style where you've got the dark red and then the darker red uh, with the um, Colorado light blue, sky blue sort of trims and Adidas uh, shoulders. Um, so what do you, very quickly, I mean, this is only a short response to this actually, but what do you make of this kit? It's, it's the Seattle shirt, but in different colours, isn't it? Well, there you go. But what does Poppy think? It's like an optical illusion. Uh, well, yeah, she's spot on. Um, it's quite exciting for a Colorado jersey, and I mean that with respect to Colorado. But it's it's the most jazzy they've gone in a long time. 
Uh, I just think it's quite clearly the same design as the Seattle one. I don't mind it. Would I wear it? Probably not. But I'm sure Colorado, they want, they need something to cheer themselves up or, or uh, <laughs> distract them from the weekend. So uh, maybe uh, an outing in the home shirt this weekend will do that for them. Um, right, let's move on to Dallas then. Now, this was one of my predictions of a shirt she'd like. It's a, well, if you look at it in isolation, it is a red uh, red sh- is red on one side and then it merges to blue on the other side, kind of going for, into a purple. It's kind of like a col- color swatch, I guess, going from red to blue. Uh, very interesting, very intriguing. I'll get your thoughts on it in a moment, Elliot. But first of all, here's what Poppy thought of this Dallas kit. I really like it. You know what? I'm a sucker for a little bit of creativity. You know, it's not just a blue and red kit. There's a bit of pink in there. There's a bit of purple. I personally wouldn't wear it, but I'm giving it a gold star for creativity. I I, I knew she'd like it. You knew she'd like it. It, it is horrific. It's awful. It, Poppy forgets these are football jerseys. These are soccer jerseys for men playing football and soccer. And it's it's not nice at all. Um, yeah, you know, in isolation, I mean, I, to be honest, I, I, I like it as a, it's an interesting kit. Would I wear it? No. Would I go out wearing it? No. Would I have a scene in it? Probably not. But it's interesting. So for creativity, I'll go with a, yeah, gold star. For an actual shirt that I'd wear myself, no, I probably wouldn't. Um, another shirt that as a 33-year-old man I probably wouldn't be able to pull off is the Houston Dynamo shirt. Uh, this is an away one. It's kind of a homage to Orlando, I guess, because it's uh, sort of purple, very bright purple uh, with uh, orange trim. So uh, purple and orange, traditionally not necessarily colours that would go with each other. But Poppy may think a bit differently. Here's what she thinks. I feel like Elliot is going to call me out on this one because I really like this. And I feel like this is very similar to an Orlando shirt that I said I didn't like. But I'm sorry, Elliot. Houston, (laughs) great shirt. And I love the orange. Orange and purple, classic. If they were leaked and that had an Orlando badge on it, I feel like you'd believe it. Uh, it's got Seattle vibes as well, the Jimi Hendrix kit. Um, I don't... (laughs) What's weird about it for me, so I'm just looking at it again, what's weird about it for me is I look at it and I'm like, oh, it's a bit purple. And then I literally wear an Orlando jersey all the time. So I'm looking at that thinking, is that what I look like? Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, right, let's move on to LA Galaxy then. Um, this one is your white kit with kind of lines down the middle of it, but uh, not in a traditional sort of vertical way. They are vertical, but a bit more wavy, I guess. Um, we know what Poppy thinks about stripe kits. She says before that she doesn't really like them, but will she like this LA Galaxy kit? This reminds me of being in high school and writing lines. LA Galaxy, have you been a naughty boy? Um, yes, I think they have been a naughty boy in the last few years because they've not done particularly <laughs> well. Uh, reminds her of doing lines at, uh, at school. Um, what do you think? My lines were never that neat at school. No way. Um, <laughs> I, I don't love, I don't love this jersey. It's not like, it's not awful. It's just, I don't really, I don't have a desire to get it. Sometimes some of the kits come out, and even if it's not an Orlando jersey, I'm like, I've got to get that. I love it. Um, this is not one of them, <laughs> certainly. Um, so let's move on to LAFC then. So LAFC's last black kit was kind of like that sort of Aztec mosaic kit. It was very nice. Um, it's a lot less designy, I guess, this time. You've got your your gold vertical stripes, but very thin stripes, pin stripes uh, on the shirt. Um Poppy's had a look at it and it reminds Poppy again of being at school and something she used to do. Back in the day, you used to get this black card and you'd get a sharp knife of it and it'd have like a etching on it and you'd use the knife and you'd scrape the etching off and it'd reveal this gold foil underneath and say you'd make a lion or something. And that's exactly what the shirt reminds me of. 
I kind of know what she means, and I I really like it. Uh, I didn't like the last one. Didn't like the the last black one. Um, this is really classy. Pinstripes. I think just looking at it, if you if you're looking at this shirt right now, imagine there's just a bit more gold just on the end of the sleeves. That's what I think's missing. Sleeves just look like they don't they're not quite finished. Um, but maybe that's a representation of their season last year. You know, just got all the way there. You know. Almost gold, but not quite. Uh, a shirt that you can't really say is just okay. I think you either love this or you hate it. Is Minnesota's? Um, it's known as the Starry Night shirt. Uh, this has been one of the most talked about shirts that has been released in MLS. Before we play, what Poppy thinks, uh, Elliot? What do you make of this? Are you are you for it or against it? I really like it. I really like the design. I, I didn't really know what made it Minnesota. Uh, but apparently that's the Minnesota sky. I, I, could it could be Africa. I don't know. I, how do I know that's the Minnesota sky? I, no idea. Um, I love it though. Uh, but I, literally every team could have it. Why don't we? Why don't every team have a third jersey and it just be the sky <laughs> above the state or the city? Well, coming from Manchester, Man United once had a uh, famous grey kit, and that represent the sky in Manchester. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't see can't see many stars with the light pollution either. So, uh, you know, maybe we'll have to make a trip to Minnesota to go out maybe into the uh, uh, more rural areas and, and check it out for ourselves. But so you like it? I quite like it as well. Here's what Poppy thinks. I really like that kit, but. I'd wear it to decorate the house because I don't think it'd look any different after. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, it has. It does look like paint splatters, doesn't it? Um, right, Portland. So Portland, Portland are quite famous in a similar way Seattle are and a few other clubs uh, for quite um, interesting kits, let's say, especially their sort of away jerseys. So this is their latest away jersey. It's like a creamy coloured kit, kind of like Austin. Uh, but uh, it's kind of got the very leafy, I don't want to say palm tree effect, but it's very leafy effect. Um, to be honest, if Miami brought this out uh, and obviously changed it to white and pink yeah, um, or black and pink, I think uh, you could say that for them as well. But um, what does Poppy think? Because she's had a look at it and it's reminded her of something around our house, actually. This looks like our wallpaper in the downstairs toilet. So obviously it's a thumbs up for me because I picked the wallpaper. I've never regretted not going for a wee in your downstairs loo so much. <laughs> I don't I don't know what she's talking about. Um but I believe her. Right, Ara Selvan, you said you quite like this one. This is very, this is probably for me the most divisive shirt that's been released. A lot of people love it, a few people that hate it. We know going off LA Galaxies a few years ago, that Portland uh was it the Rose shirt that we thought Poppy would like uh, more recently that she then didn't. The shirts that people love, she tends to hate. Will this be the case with Rail Salt Lake? Oh, I like that it has a mountain. That is all. It's very, it's very bright. It's very in your face. Um, the mountain is what makes it Utah. Uh, but I kind of get, if you hate it, I kind of get it. San Jose Earthquakes have been around for 50 years and celebrate this is their 50th anniversary shirt. It's white with red on the sides and the top. Here's what Poppy thought of this. It's just red on the side and it's a white shirt, isn't it? It's nothing special at all. Completely fair. San Jose are not on a good run of kits. Since they've had that intermediate sponsor, oh, it's been some horrors. It's been some horrors. Uh, not a fan. Quite plain Jane's, to be honest. Um, right. A shirt that isn't playing Jane. You've brought it up before. It's Seattle. That's next. Uh, it's green with uh, sort of thin, light blue stripes, sort of Seattle green and blue. Uh, it's very light. It's very, very bright. Uh, it's in your face, a bit like that Houston one. But will Poppy love it or will she hate it? Here's what she thought. If you swapped the colours so that the big stripes were that blue and the little stripe. It reminds me of an aerial shot of a pool when you swim in lanes. It also reminds me of something that you'd wear in the 90s. A fantastic shout. Um, obviously, you can't just change the colours of kits. You can't just change Seattle from green to blue. 
but uh, she's absolutely spot on there. Um, I've never thought of a striped football shirt as swimming lanes before, but of course, um, leave it to Poppy to bring a, a new perspective to something which is literally hundreds of years old. Exactly, yeah. This is it, is that she will look at Seattle, who are traditionally green. They ain't going to change from green, but go, hmm, not quite sure. Maybe you could go mostly blue instead because it looks like a swimming pool from above. Um, right, nearly there with the West, but we're going to go to Sporting KC now. So Sporting KC uh, is their Diamonds Our Forever top. It's kind of a, a dark blue with diamond print down the middle. Here's what she thought of this one. It's got a Mediterranean tile. It reminds her of Mediterranean tiles. Uh, if you've ever been to uh, the Mediterranean, Mediterranean region, maybe you'll know what she's on about. Uh, other than I just watch Mamma Mia, I guess. Um, I can kind of see where she's coming from, that mosaic style. Uh, but uh, sometimes I've got to question what goes through her head. I think, like SKC, they've been here before. This is not a new design for them. Uh, and so it just it just is what it is. I don't like it personally, but I didn't like it when they had it before. And so... Fine. You do you, SKC. Right, St. Louis of this year, after last year, having to release both home and away jersey. This year, they've released just the away one. Quite similar, I guess. They've gone for the white colour again. Pinky red uh, Adidas, um, you know, stripes on the top. And then down the side is uh, that sort of red trim. Very basic, but it has got a bit of a design in the middle of it. The, the wavy sort of, it's kind of like sound waves, I guess. No one's rushing out to buy that. Even the St. Louis no. fans are a bit meh, surely. <laughs> but is Poppy rushing out to buy it? I do actually quite like this one, um, purely for the background. I feel like I could see myself wearing this shirt, you know? Will we ever agree? Ever. Probably not. Uh, right, last but not least in the West, here's Vancouver Whitecaps. Now remember, Vancouver are based in Canada. Here's what she said about this one. This feels very American football. Yeah, it feels like a Jersey kind of vibe. Uh, I don't really know where that's come from, but uh, quite clearly got a big Canada maple leaf on it. So um, yeah, have to disagree there. Um, I don't love this, but I th- bit of heritage. I, I don't like that collar at all. Um, other than that, it's very plain, isn't it? Yeah, um, I mean, to give her some credit, uh, a friend of ours does live in Vancouver, so she's well aware that it is in Canada. I don't want to uh, do her dirty on that one, but <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe it's, uh, you know, in the picture I'm seeing, it's it maybe the, uh, the actual material is a bit more, um, you know, slightly different maybe to what we've seen. So maybe she's thinking about that. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a, a dark, sort of a denim color, isn't it? A dark blue. Uh, I quite like it. I think it's a bit different for Vancouver. I love the 50 years kits that have got different badges. So uh, I'm on board with this one. Um, Not quite, again, not quite sure with the NFL thing for her, but not bad, not bad. Not the worst shirt, probably swaying into my favourite shirts, but not um, not amongst the top three or four. There's some shockers, but I think we're making progress. We've come a long way from the, the plain white shirts that every single team had for a little while. Part two of Poppy's kit reviews, where she reviews the kits in the East, including Atlanta and Orlando's, is coming on later in the podcast. Uh, We've also got a new game from Elliot, one of his first games of 2024. But first, we're going to hear what happened when I spoke to Apple TV's MLS Season Pass's MLS 360 host, Kevin Egan, who uh, you would have heard at the weekend on MLS 360. and I re- I've, I've, we've watched him for a while. Of course, he was commentator for Atlanta in the heyday, in the glory days. When you hear Almiron or um, Martinez score for Atlanta, you think of Kevin Egan's voice. So I wanted to ask him about that, his thoughts on MLS in 2024. And then I also wanted to get his opinions on the kits for this year as well. So here's what happened when I caught up with MLS 360's Kevin Egan. MLS UK show with Elliot Holman and Henry Hewitt. So welcome back to the MLS UK show. And I'm delighted to say joining us now is the lead host of MLS 360 on Apple TV's MLS season pass. Well, you know who it is. It's Kevin Egan. How are you, Kevin? Henry, great to be on with you. I'm good. Thanks. Buzzing for, for the weekend. 
Yes, well, we're speaking on the Thursday uh, ahead of the first weekend of MLS action. So we have had one game so far, which we'll talk about a uh, little later on. But for now, I, the, I mean, for you, um, you know, a soccer fan, I know you support Aston Villa as well. So to be given the, uh, the honour of being the lead host for MLS 360, I mean, this must be a dream job for you, right? You've taken the words. It absolutely is a dream job. It, you couldn't script a show that I feel would get me more excited than bouncing from game to game, goal to goal. Like you've got kickoff and in, in, in say the central time games, you know, we're a half time in the Eastern time. You're talking about a big game to come out, out in the West coast. If, if I can do my job as well as I know I can, at least I hope I can, this will hopefully be a show that, that fans will get behind and want to watch, you know, like I, I see what Jeff Stelling is able to do with Soccer Saturday over over in England and across Ireland and people watching and just love his infectious enthusiasm for the game and his knowledge of every single player, it seems, whether it's like a couple of tiers below, it doesn't matter. Jeff's able to bring that knowledge and enthusiasm or whether it's Red Zone over here with the NFL. I think this is going to be some sort of a hybrid between both where we get the personalities out of Bradley, Sasha and Kalen in studio Lean on them for their expertise. Kalen was that defensive midfielder or center back. Sasha was that creative number 10. Bradley was putting the ball away from close range and was just the ultimate striker for the New York Red Bulls. So I'm hoping that this can become a big hit. And I'm I'm really honored to be in this chair. So is this what we can expect then? Because ahead of a new season, obviously, we, t- we are speaking before the first um, weekend and this will go out after the first weekend. So I guess everyone would have seen the new season of 360. Is there anything that's changed or can we just expect more of the same of what we used to? I think less, hopefully less commercial breaks during the action. We do have to get a certain amount of breaks in, but we're going to try and get those in whether before kickoff or during half times, and really make sure we don't miss action. The other thing was last year, I think we focused a lot on say a four box of the games. I found that difficult as a viewer at times because It's difficult to watch two games, let alone four, you know, and you could be talking about one game and a goal goes in elsewhere. So I I do think we're going to focus more on a single match at a time. And if a goal goes in, we're going to have a goal alert and be like, hey, Sasha, keep the mouth shut for a second. got to go back out to Foxborough. There's been a goal, the Revs, uh, you know, and and not give away actually who scored the goal. But but there's been a goal. Let's get there. Let's see what happened then. And either go to the commentators in that moment or let us break it down as it's happening. So you're having a bit of banter with the guys, the fact that you get to tell them to shut up. Well, <laughs> shut yeah. up, there's been a goal. Yeah, which won't be easy to do with Sasha Kalen <laughs> and Brad, let's be honest. <laughs> no, you've got a good point. Um, so as people can tell with your accent, you're from this side of the Atlantic. Um, let's, you know, for everyone who's going to be watching you throughout the season on MLS Season Pass, I want to know a bit more about you. How did your journey uh, go from Ireland over to uh, North America? Um, where did it start? And, um, you know, just, yeah, what, where's your commentary career come to to get to this point? Yeah, cheers for asking. I'm from Dublin, Ireland. Uh, lived there until I was 23, moved to America. So my mother, Kathy, is from Chicago and my dad is from Dublin. And uh, my dad was a Gaelic footballer, Irish footballer. has two All-Ireland medals. And when they were touring America, that's how he met my mom. Anyway, they moved to Ireland. I think my mom was pregnant with me when they moved there. And I just, I just always had... Um, a, a love for TV and I didn't know if I wanted to be on air I, I I wanted to break in whether it be a producer or a director working behind the scenes floor manager I wasn't sure so when I tore my ACL when I was playing uh, as a 19 year old I was in college I got a job in RTE or national broadcaster basically making tea and coffee um, being a runner you know like a greatest job ever because it gave you access to every room and chats with every single person, whether it be the cleaner or whether it be, you know, the, the the general manager of the network. So you have an opportunity to prove yourself from within. And one job led to another, led to another. And I ended up, you know, becoming a, like a radio broadcaster with RTE and doing some stuff on TV as well. And that's when I looked up at the ladder and I thought, you're going to be here for 20 years before a few of these people retire. And these guys are lifers, you know, and these women are lifers. So Give it a go. Go to America. My grandmother was in Chicago. So go and and try and break into a network. And luckily I did after about seven months or so, I got in with the Big Ten Network and I started to to do a show for free there for them, a digital show called the BTN Soccer Report. And that led to Chicago Fire doing sideline, which led to commentary, which led to being sports and Atlanta United, CNN and so forth. 
So you've mentioned there, obviously, Chicago Fire. We all, all know and remember the calls when Joseph Martinez and Miguel Almiron were scoring for Atlanta. Um, you've also uh, been in Miami as well. Do you have an MLS team? Are, are you allowed to say you've got an MLS team that you follow? Well, there's a special love for both Chicago and Atlanta, let's be honest, because even growing up as a kind of a Chicago boy in a lot of ways, because my ma's a like a was a diehard Cubs fan growing up, that the fire always held a special place for me. And knowing the history and, and, and kind of always trying to check it out when I come over to visit uh, America. And then Atlanta United comes along at a time when I'm being in sports and I'm covering La Liga and Serie A League and the, the international games. And out of nowhere, an opportunity comes up to fill in for Alan Green, a BBC radio broadcaster, and do the first five games. Now, I love Major League Soccer. And this was an unreal and exciting opportunity. So to do the first five games was so cool. And then I got a shout toward the end of the season saying, do you want to be our guy next year and going forward? And that was a dream job. So massive bra, as we say in Ireland, love for both Chicago and Atlanta. And I'm based here in Atlanta now. And I see my son wearing Atlanta United jerseys and, and starting to get behind the team. So I'll be heading to Mercedes-Benz Stadium every opportunity I can for maybe Sunday games as Atlanta have actually a few to start the year. Yeah, well, he went from. I remember him going from Alan Green to yourself. I did wonder at one point, what is it with Atlanta and Irish like commentators? Have you just got a thing for them? Or, um, but no, you your voice, as I said, is just a. It's a pretty. You know, you are that early stage of Atlanta United. You know that exciting uh, play and obviously culminating in the uh, MLS Cup win. You, your voice is synonymous with that. I'm an Atlanta fan myself, so. I, I, Are you really? I, yeah, like so. Like I, I, I love I'm talking to you now, and I just uh, hearing your voice just reminds me of those days. But well, let's get I, a beer when you get over to Atlanta. We'll go to a game together. Hey, definitely, definitely. <laughs> um, but we can't just talk about Atlanta. We have an MLS UK show. We will talk about Atlanta a little later on. But uh, we've seen, I guess, one game so far as we're talking. Inter Miami beat RSL last night. A lot's being talked about into Miami. Um, of what you saw, is that kind of what you expected, or is there a lot more to come? Or is the you know is are we going to see different sides to Miami throughout the season? To answer those questions, yes and yes. It's what I expected, which was quite lethargic at times from Inter Miami, a little bit messy, not M I M E S S I. Um, tired. They looked. They looked kind of tired. They they certainly weren't clicking into full gear. As for Rail Salt Lake, I expected much more. I was left wanting more at halftime. I'm sure you were the same, Henry. Where With a Pablo Mastroeni team, you expect them to, to absolutely bring it and never, ever look like they've got that level of trepidation that we saw last night. And, and it, didn't, it didn't work for them, especially in the first half. They came out of their shell and they were gifted some real opportunities by Miami and they couldn't capitalize. And in the end, a genius run for Messi. Suarez with the assist and Gomez with the lovely finish wrapped it up. But I think we're going to see much more from Miami much, much more. When It's going to be curious to see how they manage their roster and, and their final roster, what it looks like with their defense. There's been some rumors that we could see someone like Christoph or Yedlin depart the club, maybe even Robert Taylor. I don't know how it's going to play out over the next few weeks, but they're going to need reinforcements and they're going to need legs because it's the oldest team in MLS. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of that 11 you're looking at last night are over 30. Even Robert Taylor's 29, you know? So it's just... It's a fascinating study to see this Miami team and how it plays out competing in four different competitions. Yeah, I mean, it will be a shame if Taylor goes because I've loved seeing his resurgence, yeah. if you will, since Messi has joined. Like We yeah. joked on our Twitter account the other day during that game when Taylor scored going, Robert Taylor's going to be in Messi's all-time best 11 teammates at this rate <laughs> when he <laughs> retires. But um, yeah, I, I think for me, you know, Miami, um, yeah, to, it epitomizes what we're going to get. Going forward, they're very good not so much at the back. And if they need someone to get them out of a hole, Messi will do it. And I think that's, for me, what yeah. we're going to see more of. One thing I'll say, though, is last night, I was fascinated by the fact that Tata left Suarez on until the 89th minute. Knowing there's a game on Sunday in Los Angeles against the Galaxy, Campana's young, full of legs. I thought we'd see Suarez exit around 65. That tells me that Suarez was the one saying, I want to stay in. And then it becomes this juggling act for Tata knowing that you're going to play, you know, 45 games this year, probably. So how, how do you manage this? How do you manage Suarez and Messi? Messi will want to stay on at all times, but you've got Campana and you should use him because he's a real talent. 
Yeah, I was surprised by that as well. And I think what also surprised me is that I'd heard this stat before, but all the noise about Suarez and his knees and whatever, he he did play a lot of games, didn't he, in Brazil last year? So yeah. he has got that. So I guess I, I'm with you. I, do I think he'll play the full game or even start on Sunday? I guess we'll only find out when this episode goes out in yeah. the, you know next week. But um, yeah, for especially seeing the the tour um and the complications around that and how it all ended up i was yeah i was quite surprised too um just a point on that tour because a lot was made of it they've traveled well to the other side of the planet for these games um do you think something like that which is something that we see in the premier league isn't it we see the top six do it but something like that for into miami could that do more harm than good uh in the opening weeks of the season if you simply look at the ages of these players and the miles they put up it's absolutely a question that's worth asking Get, you know, five, six weeks into the season, even longer because the fatigue can be delayed, you know, and, and it comes on in stages throughout the season. It was a lot of miles, um, obviously for a reason. The league has the greatest player of all time, Leo Messi, who starred again last night, who looked really, really good in a lot of moments last night. So you can understand why they did it. I think they'll probably do the same thing next year. Um, but I, I do think that we're human beings at the end of the day. And I know if I'm on a plane, for that long, even though it's probably a, a luxurious flight, it doesn't matter. It takes its toll on you. So you've got to go now from playing last night, Messi, 90 plus minutes, Suarez, 89 minutes. Now you go to Los Angeles, which is a, a good trek. And these players aren't used to that sort of travel. And, and it's one thing with Major League Soccer that I think people kind of roll their eyes at it a little bit. But I remember Sean Maloney when he was playing here, former Celtic star, and Steven Gerrard said the same thing. But Maloney told me personally, he said, you can talk about this all the time, but until you experience the travel, the time difference, the altitude, the cold, the heat, he said it's one thing talking about it, but then you experience it and you realize the toll it takes on your body. And it's one of the major challenges of Major League Soccer. Yeah, um, you know, I think that's, there's a lot of stuff that people see, especially in this country, you talk to people about MLS and a lot of people at the moment are just assuming that Inter Miami are going to win it. And we're saying to them, it's not as easy as that. You just yeah. don't win MLS Cup. It's, I think you're it's right. Difficult. I think a lot of people, a lot of people outside of the US are saying that. A lot of people are just looking at it saying, ah, it's MLS. They've got Messi. Come on. No, it's not that easy. I'm, I'm picking Inter Miami actually probably to win it. Uh, MLS Cup, that is. But I think they're going to finish fourth or fifth in the Supporter Shield or fourth or fifth even in the East. The East is is stacked this year. Um, the West may have a Supporter Shield winner because I think the talent and the teams are more stacked in the East and they, they'll take points off each other. But uh, for me, Messi and, and Miami won't go to Columbus and play the way they want to play. They won't go to Cincinnati. They won't go to Atlanta and play the way they want to play. So some big, big challenges coming up. And Tata Martino is going to have to, to play his cards right throughout the season. So let's talk about some of those other sides then within MLS. Um, and just to touch on RSL just for a moment, because they're the only other team that we've seen. You you probably put them in the mid level bracket of teams that perhaps won't be pushing for MLS Cup, but definitely should be making the playoffs. Yeah. Um, we saw Houston last year have an amazing season. Is there any other teams within that sort of mid bracket that you've got your eye on, thinking they could maybe get to the latter stages of the playoffs this time? At West Dallas, I think Dallas Dallas are sneaky good this year. Uh, Estevez is a good coach. I think he's going to change the system. You're going to see more of a like a 3-4-2-1 with Petar Musa, their new signing from Portugal, leading the line. Uh, I think this is a really good, really good team. Celia and Ariola will play as wingbacks. They'll tear forward. In midfield, Pomichel's fit and healthy for the first time in a while. And he's alongside Yara Mendy, who has tremendous experience, former Real Madrid player in midfield. At the back, Tafari has grown into a real leader. Pius and goal. There, there's just talent throughout. And with Jesus Ferreira in this underneath role behind Musa, I think we're going to see the very best out of him. He reminds me a lot of maybe a Clint Dempsey or a Bobby Firmino in the way he can play. And I think he's going to be at his best with Bernie Camungo alongside him. This 11 for Dallas can cause problems for an awful lot of teams. And as I said, I think the East is more stacked, which could lean in Dallas's favor over on the Western side. So I think Dallas would be one pick there. Looking at the West, you just said there, it's obviously everyone's looking at the East. You're looking at the um, West now and thinking, well, there's only one or two names maybe that are going to challenge. We were saying on our season preview the other day that Seattle looked like a, such a strong squad at the moment. What do you think of their chances? Could it be a year for Seattle to get back to MLS Cup and, and yeah. win it again? I think so. 
most definitely. I think Dallas, Seattle, and LAFC are my front three in the West. Um, and I'm not sure what order I'd put them in yet. Seattle, though, I think they'll be better defensively. Fry had the most clean sheets last year. And with Reagan and Yimer starting to really understand each other. Reagan's still a young centre-back, but tremendous talent. They've got youth elsewhere. They, they've moved on some older pieces, but I still think Rui Diaz will score a lot of goals for them. Jordan Morris looks fit. They've got a real opportunity. And LAFC, they, like they've added pieces. I'm seeing stuff online about LAFC have remained stagnant in the offseason. They have not. Anything but. I think bringing back Ets West is a, a baller move. Tommy Angel is someone I'd keep an eye on. Juan Pablo Angel's son. And I know Juan Pablo, I've spoken to him about his son, and he's he's the sort of player that I feel they need. He's a super sub off the bench who's really tav- savvy in tight spaces and can be that goal scorer, that, that like nearly that cult hero off the bench that the fans love to see, like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was for Manchester United. I think he can be that player for LAFC. With Christian Oliveira set to really step up again, I think, and Buwanga there too, this is a side that could, could, be, could make history and, and become the first side since the Revs to reach back-to-back-to-back to back to back MLS Cups. Yeah, we, we said a few years ago on the podcast how LAFC, you really feel that they could be the ones to build kind of a dynasty, yeah. um, you know, that we haven't seen in a long time in MLS. And okay, they lost out last year, but to get to that MLS Cup this year would certainly cement that, wouldn't it? Um, yeah. So looking then ahead then uh, with the East, um, you know, quite a few head coach changes this year. Obviously, as an Aston Villa fan, you'll have your eye on Dean Smith coming in, in sh- at Charlotte. What can Charlotte fans expect from Dean Smith um, on the pitch and then maybe the impact he'll have off the pitch too? So with Charlotte, for anyone that's not aware, two DPs gone in Juzviak and Svidersky. Enzo Capetti is the only DP right now. Now, the primary transfer window is open until April 23rd. So they have a little bit of time to get some business done. But Charlotte can't afford to fall too far behind early. The squad is really thin, Henry. Really, really thin. Um, And they hope to add people soon. The one point I'll say is, Dean Smith, throughout his managerial career, has always had a tremendous impact on a lone striker. Likes to play with a 4-3-3. I think about players like Tammy Abraham, when he had him in the championship. Ollie Watkins at Brentford. Even... Las Vibe, you remember at Brentford how prolific he was under Dean Smith. These were lone strikers. And I look at Enzo Capetti, and Enzo Capetti has this bull like mentality in the same way Ollie Watkins does, in the same way that Vibe did as well at Brentford. And I just think there's something special here brewing with Capetti and Dean Smith. If you can stay wide, stretch the field, let Capetti make those runs in behind, that is a manager that can really help Capetti. And, uh, That's one aspect of that team that I'm looking forward to. The other new manager that I think, there's two others that I'd love to point point out in the East. One is Laurent uh, Courtois at Montreal. We're back to Wilfred Nancy Ball, but a a source there very close to the team told me it is Wilfred Nancy Ball on steroids. You're going to see Sirwa, the goalkeeper, playing nearly as a centre-back, much higher up the field. They're going to ask their goalkeeper to play. They've got a really deep squad. In every position, really, you think about even the wing backs. I think you're going to see maybe more of a similar to Dallas, a 3 4 2 1 or 3 4 1 2 with potentially Kakaro and Martinez both starting, leading the line for them. But in, in the likes of Lapalainen and Juan now, they've got good wing backs. Waterman stepped up as a good centre back. And in midfield, Piet, Wanyama, Schwanier, even uh, Saliba is a young talent that they really like. I expect Montreal to be sneaky good. And I also think the New York Red Bulls under Schwartz will be a really, really interesting team. Excellent defensively, an excellent goalkeeper. In a midfield duo in Amaya and Edelman, they've got class coming through. Now you add Forsberg. The biggest question of all is can Van Zer score goals? That is the biggest question. If he can score goals and Forsberg can be the provider, I think New York Red Bulls could be looking at a home playoff game. And, um, of course, Columbus Crew are looking to retain yeah. MLS Cup. And no team has done it since 2011. Can Columbus be that first team? Yeah. Yeah. To answer your question, stock up with Columbus still. Because now they get that, you know, that the, the, they get the f- full off season with Wilfred Nancy. They're, they're, the, the vibes, everything I'm hearing from Columbus is immense. You get a player like Morris who continues to grow in midfield alongside, for me, the greatest MLS player of all time in Darlington Nagby. Um, I just love him. I just love him as a player. I love him as a person. I love the fact that everywhere he goes, he improves the players around him and he does it in such an understated way. He's not the guy shouting from the rooftops about how good he is. 
He's won MLS Cups with three different teams. It's not a coincidence. And yet Darlington Nagby probably is still underrated for, for a lot of people. Uh, so when you've got one of the greatest to ever do it in the league, and you've got the talent around him like they have, you've got Rossi now uh, integrated into the team. Think about what they went through last year with Zeller Ryan leave and having to recruit Rossi. A little bit of turnover, yet they still win it. Now I think we're going to see Columbus from the get-go. In saying that, I wouldn't be surprised if they're shocked week one against Atlanta. And I know this podcast is going out afterwards, but I wouldn't be surprised given what Atlanta have done if they go to Columbus and cause an upset. So just before you leave, on this, what we do on this episode, uh, once a year at the start, we get my wife, Poppy, to uh, rate the kits and review the kits uh, just because she's not into football. She doesn't get the history of it all. And she will say, Seattle shouldn't play in green because it's the same colour as the pitch and they won't be able to see okay. each other. So um, I guess you're in a position where you get to see the kits up close. You get to see them all the time. Has any of the new sort of jerseys, um, any that you've had your eye on, any that any of it you're rating this season? So there's a lot of hype about Seattle's jersey. Fair enough. Um, I think Atlanta's. I'm in Atlanta and I see the buzz here. I saw the NBA players rocking up there a few weeks ago with the leak wearing the jersey. And uh, it's really cool. It's a cool, cool look, the new blue and white kit. And I like it. Hopefully I'll get one. Club, if you're listening, send one on. <laughs> surely you should get one. You just need to ask, surely. <laughs> yeah, um, true. Yeah, I, I like it. I like the away ones. I've got to say, and as an Atlanta fan, I shouldn't really say this, but Orlando's is quite nice as well. But uh, for me, the Minnesota one, is uh, that's up there. The, the okay. sort of starry, starry night or whatever you know, it is. I'm, but, I'm not a kit guy. I must say, no. I never cared. No, like when people are losing their minds on Twitter about <laughs> kits, I just kind of roll my eyes. It's like, yeah, what? It, it's a kit. I just, I just don't get the 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 hype around it. But that's just me, I suppose. I, I've always been that way. Well, we could, we could agree. That's why I get my wife to review. Yeah, instead of yeah, doing it yeah. I should do the same, actually. <laughs> uh, right. Well, Kevin, thanks so much for joining us on the MLS UK show. Remember, you can see Kevin uh, every weekend, every match day on MLS 360s, the lead host on Apple TV's MLS Season Pass. Have an amazing season. And I'm with you. Let's hope that Atlanta can give you a happy, a happy ending at the end of your your season with MLS 360. You're a gent. Cheers, Henry. Love joining you guys. And anytime I can jump on, I'm happy to. MLS UK Show with Elliot Holman and Henry Hewitt. So that was my chat with Kevin Egan from MLS 360 on Apple TV's MLS Season Pass. Thanks so much uh, for joining us on the show, Kevin. And you can watch him every weekend on MLS 360 as they go around the grounds and show us all the goals from the night's matches. Um, right, Elliot, you've been famous on this podcast for coming up with some unique games, some games that have stuck, some games that have uh, uh, have come in and then gone after one week. So 2024, now this is probably the first time we're doing this um, remotely on Zoom to each other, so we'll see how this works. But what's your first game of 2024? Uh, okay, so it's called Bold Predictions, um, based on the opening weekend of MLS, where most teams have only played one game. Uh, I'm going to draw a statement for you or for me, and uh, you are going to have to just blindly agree with that statement and go along with it and back it up with whatever evidence you can grab at, okay? Okay. Uh, so I'll pick one for you first. Cincinnati are going to win the CONCACAF Champions League. Oh, um, well, of course they are. Of course they are. Of course they're going to win CONCACAF yeah. Champions League. They've already got the supporter shield under their belt. They're used to winning now. Okay, we didn't win MLS Cup, but we ignore that because they were saving it for the big one. They were saving it to become the second team to win CONCACAF Champions League. And I mean, just look at the players they've got. I mean, they've got Lucho Acosta Acosta is made for the big stage, a bigger stage than MLS Cup. He's made for CONCACAF Champions League final and he will be in that and he will perform and Cincinnati will be raising the CONCACAF Champions League. It's a no-brainer. I mean, they're already practically through anyway as we record this. Not actually, but they're pretty much through. So they've already done the hard job. I mean, going to uh, wherever they went to, (laughs) I can't remember the country now, but going there and beating that team, They've pretty much done it. So easy, easy peasy. They'll get to the final and win it. Okay, good. Good start. Um, Let's pick a statement for me. 
Uh, okay, it's about Orlando, so this should be good. Orlando will average less than one goal scored per game. Oh. Uh, I couldn't agree more. Uh, as much as it pains me to say it. Um, of course, opened with a draw at home. Nil-nil, our favourites. Um, I think that's fine because Orlando's defence is pretty sturdy, pretty solid. Don't concede loads of goals. I think that's fair to say. Um, so sure, you know, we've wasted millions on Muriel and we've got, uh, you know, <laughs> Duncan Maguire and we've got Facundo Torres. Um, but, you know, they don't need to score because we've got a solid defensive foundation um and if you did watch the game at the weekend where robin jansen who i love was terrible and couldn't even stay on his feet for two seconds and then just just don't worry about it it's all going to be fine i believe you i totally believe you (laughs) uh do you want another one uh go on then seattle don't make the playoffs go well, we lost the first game. You can't lose the first game. I mean, I know I said earlier on in the podcast, you can't really judge much off the first game, but you actually can. I'm going back on that. We <laughs> lost the first game to a rival within the playoffs, so they might as well just finish the season now. All they're going to use this season for is an excuse to show off the kits and try and sell more jerseys, uh, but they should just give up the playoffs because, I mean, just look at some of the players. They've got no MLS experience. They've got no experience of winning anything. So, uh, right off now, and uh, Seattle, you're not making playoffs. Yeah, I, I may I agree. Um, <laughs> I'll do one. I'll do one to finish up as well. Um, Toronto, oh no, Toronto are as good as FC Cincinnati, <laughs> uh, and ov- that's obvious, right? Because you, as you, as Henry just correctly said, everything hinges on the opening weekend of MLS. Um, so of course, of course, it makes complete sense. You know, they drew, they drew against Cincinnati, which means um, forever. They're forever bound. They are the same. <laughs> they are equal. Um, Toronto, uh, I believe, have got one of the highest uh, wage bills in the uh, in the league, thanks to Bernadeschi and uh, uh, Insigne. So they'll come good, just like they did last year, and it'll all be fine. Of course, yeah, and that first game, as I've said, you, you've you got to go off the first game, and technically then Toronto are as good as Cincinnati because they drew. And um, if you if you want to send us some some of these, maybe after the um after the week two, maybe send us some for for the next episode, and we'll see if we can make a argue a case for you. Yes, please do get in touch uh, at MLS UK Show on the socials, uh, X, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, or you can email us hello at mls.show as well. Uh, any questions or you want to resp- uh, respond to anything, then stick it in the comments on YouTube um, as well, and uh, we'll we'll read them all and we'll get back to you, um, and we'll uh, we'll then put any questions into a future episode. Uh, right. So uh, also, if you want to have a say on Poppy's kit reviews, you're more than welcome. So let's get into the East, and you can any supporters of the East can see whether she is a fan of your kits. Of course, we're looking at Atlanta and Orlando in particular because we support those teams. And at the end of this, she will be saying her top three favourite kits and her top, uh, well, her worst three kits as well. So are you ready, Elliot, to hear what she thinks of the kits in the East? Yeah, I'm there. I've got the uh, Atlanta kit ready to go, which, of course, is horrible. So um, let's see what she thinks. So this jersey, if you've not seen it, is their away jersey and it's kind of a Phoenix from the Flames kind of jersey. Uh, It's the resurgence kit, as they're calling it. Um, What colour would you describe it as, Ellie? Is it like a a greeny, bluey? How would you see it? If you took the Atlanta badge off and showed me, I'd just presume it is an LA Galaxy shirt, to be honest. Okay, then. Well, does Poppy agree? What does she think? This is her thoughts on the Atlanta jersey this year resurrecting from the fire it's the phoenix that's what it looks like anyway i like it and it's not red praise me love it love the phoenix vibes that is the one love it okay um as somebody who if i shouldn't say this on the podcast but i'm just gonna say it anyway no one react to it just pretend i haven't told you um if aurelia would have been a boy we were going to call 
him, Phoenix. Uh, so I would have been absolutely livid at this point that Atlanta yeah. have done this. Um, but it's good. Get out of the way before Phoenix inevitably join MLS, right? Yeah, I, I like how you can uh, reveal that because so I like me and Poppy. Obviously, we've had a boy and our girl name. We're like, no, we're not saying any that to anyone because we could have a girl one day. I like how because of this shirt, you have now said basically you are ditching that name because it's going to be associated yeah, with Atlanta. <laughs> Uh, right, let's move on to Charlotte, which isn't the girl's name that we had chosen uh, if uh, we had a girl. Um, so this Charlotte jersey is, I think it's really nice. It's kind of like, a, do you know when you, um, and I, I, I know I'm, I'm taking a leaf out of Poppy's book really with this and this sort of analogy on it, but do you know when you put different colored sand in a bottle and it kind of it becomes, yes. it's, uh, it's not flat, is it? It's kind of uh, wavy. It, that's how it reminds me. It goes from whitish at the top to uh like a uh kind of a royal blue like a chelsea blue at the bottom does poppy like it as well here's what she thinks i like that it feels beachy like some waves it's almost like the bottom of a pool as well the way it's got that swirly but no it's it reminds me of waves i, I actually really like that i thought she was going to ask who ali was <laughs> Yeah, she does. Uh, she she hasn't mentioned the sponsors this year. She does like to uh, mention the sponsors, in, in, in particular Philadelphia Union's Bimbo Bread, which uh, yeah. Bimbo has a very different <laughs> meaning in the UK, uh, and we've had to edit that out quite a few times <laughs> over the years. Um, right, let's move on to Chicago then. So they have returned to red this year, but we know that Poppy doesn't tend to like a red kit. Will she like this one? Well, return to red, you shouldn't have. Return back to the previous kit. Can't remember if I liked that. As a traditionalist, return to red, yeah, makes sense. Um, Chicago messed around a lot with imagery and badges and jerseys recently. Um, red is fine, but like, just do it better than that. It just looks like every Chicago shirt I've ever seen. It's the same. <laughs> I know it's completely different, but also, is it? It just reminds me of all of their previous shirts. Yeah, it's a, it is a return to what we know. Uh, of course, Chicago's jersey last year was my favourite jersey. I think it was Poppy's favourite, actually. So, uh, yeah, I love that, and I'm glad that they'll continue with that until next year when they'll return to just plain boring white again. Um, but, yeah, I'm with you. It's We've seen it before with Chicago. It's not bad. It's it's just when you've got, some, when you've got like the Minnesota kit, then, uh, yeah, it's definitely in the more, I don't know, plainer category. Uh, right, let's move on to FC Cincinnati. Supporters Shield winners, uh, level with Toronto and going to win Champions League, uh, according to our game. Uh, but what shirt will we be doing all that in? It's a white shirt with blue uh, Adidas trims and then kind of a blue-orange sort of mishmash down the side. Uh, what does Poppy think of this one? I always think it's a good sign when I pause and have to lean in closer to have another look, but I don't even know. I genuinely don't know if I like. I love that colour blue. I've just bought myself a coat in that colour blue. I really like that colour blue. Um, I can confirm she has bought a coat in that colour blue, so uh, she does like it, but not mixed with the orange or not on that shirt. I'm, I could be about to out myself as the least observant person in the world, which isn't true because I am really observant. Can you see that? You see the MLS badge on the sleeve. It's in Cincy colours. Yeah. That's something that they used to do. Is that on all of these kits? I haven't noticed that. This is the first one I've spotted that on. Well, let's have a look. Let's go to the let's go to the next jersey, which is Columbus Crew, and let's see if it's on there. Oh, well, they're obviously MLS Cup winners, so they've got an MLS trophy <laughs> on there. So we'll save this one because that's just white. Um, but their jersey, uh, they're going back to yellow. The Buzzy Bees, as Poppy ones called them, yellow top. With uh, black in the middle, kind of uh, a sharp, sharp design, um, up and down, kind of triangle. Is it a arrow pointing down? I can't really work it out. What do you think? Could be, could be a ribbon. Could be an arrow. Could be just a random thing that Adidas thought was a good idea, and they were wrong. Um, luckily, I really like Columbus Crew, so it's fine. Um, and I love that MLS badge, special MLS Cup one. Uh, what does Pops think? Columbus. This, you've let me down i don't really like this color yellow this time i feel like it's a bit more neon than usual 
I do like the middle band. That's really cool. Is it dotty? Yeah, it's dotty. Um, I like that, like pixelated. But yeah, it's just the colour yellow this season. It's, it's not the one. Will we ever agree on anything? I don't think you will. Even, uh, you know, her buzzy bees, even a club that we think she's guaranteed to like that shirt, she then decides she doesn't. She does tend to change her mind a lot throughout the season. I've got to point that out. And, and in previous seasons. Um, so, you know, chances are I'll show her that same shirt in a few weeks and she'll go, oh, I like that shirt. I like the middle bit. I like the yellow. Um, let's move on to DC. Not a hint of yellow in that shirt. It's uh, their black design. Now, this is quite an interesting design in the in the background of the shirt because as I'm looking here now at it, I mean, I'm going to play you. Actually, let me, if you're watching on our YouTube channel, you'll see the jersey. If you're not, then try and Google it um, and let me play you this. So this is Poppy's thoughts on this shirt and what it reminds her of. And then Elliot, you tell me if you agree afterwards. I love it, but <laughs> it really reminds me of worms. You know, like how worms mate by rubbing that like wiggly bit on the bodies together. Oh, it's a bendy straw. There we go. Um, so worms mating are a bendy straw. Am I looking at the same kit? If I, if I just said bendy straw, could you understand that? Is she all right? She was very tired. We'd just finished watching One Day on Netflix, so she was a bit emotional. Ooh. Um yeah, so I I don't know whether that has anything to do with it, uh. But to, I, bendy straw, I can see, I can kind of understand worms, less so the mating of worms. I I'm looking at a different jersey, but one thing I can confirm is uh this the the MLS badge on the sleeve is color coded to the club, so that's just something I've clearly missed on all of the others. All right, Miami, let's do it. Here we go. Um. It's pink. She loves pink. Um, I don't think you're going to enjoy hearing this, Elliot. Here's what she thinks about Inter Miami's home jersey. Miami just has a little place in my heart. I feel like I'm very close to dropping Columbus Crew as my team and jumping ship to Miami because I love the shade of pink. You know what? Boys that can wear pink, chef's kiss. Chef's kiss. I uh, Put her on. Come on, I need to talk to her. This is ridiculous. So, first of all, what's the one and only MLS game that she's been to? Uh, Orlando versus New England Revolution. Hmm. And she chooses Columbus as her team and then flirts with moving to Miami. Sort it out. Um, Fun fact, I saw this before it was released... Before it was even leaked, I saw this jersey uh, on ASOS. I was looking for something to wear for some new photos we were having done at work. And uh, I just went on like t-shirts and thought, oh, maybe alongside my outfit, I'll treat myself to any like Adidas t-shirt or whatever. And I was scrolling through and I saw this and I was like, Ugh. but like I knew everyone was getting on the into Miami hype. And because it doesn't really look too much like specifically a football jersey just like a shirt a, a t-shirt or whatever um i just scrolled past it and i didn't really understand what the the logo was on the front but i thought it was obviously something they've collabed with some designer that i'm not cool enough to understand um and then about a week later it was revealed and i was like oh well asos have been selling that for a week <laughs> so <laughs> you might want to look into that guys um <laughs> So I'd seen it and not even realized that I'd seen it. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's all right. Just all right. Are you saying that through your Orlando gritted teeth? Yeah, it's all right. Uh, right, let's move on to Montreal then. So their kit is a white kit with a, uh, a blue, royal blue sort of uh, jagged stripe down where the badge is. Um, Let's see what she thinks about this, because to me, this is quite plain. But let's see if Poppy agrees. Love the colour blue. Love that it's white. Love that it's like psh, at the edges. Love it. Um, I think her, her describing techniques had, had gone a bit dry at this one because she described it as psh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm basing this on nothing but just what my brain is. I just look at that and think Didier Drogba. I, yeah. I, they must have had a kit similar. 
maybe with a stripe or something. Like, I know the stripe is different. I'm not saying it's exactly the same. Um, but that's it. the BMO, the white, the blue. It just It's just Drogba. But the MLS badge isn't really color-coded on that. What's going on? Come on. This is why I, I'm kind of glad. This is why it obviously didn't jump out at me on, on some of the others. What are they doing? Where's the consistency? Henry, come on, riddle me that. Uh, I think we better move on. Uh, Nashville. Now, Nashville fans, you have been waiting. You have been here for however long this episode is right now. You have been waiting to hear what Poppy thinks of your kit. It's yellow, traditional Nashville colours. Will she like it? Will she not? Here's what she's got to say about it. Why have you shown me Columbus Crew's kit again? <laughs> Uh, it's nicer than Columbus, the Columbus kit. I'm going to be honest. Um, I like the Nashville colours. I think they, I think the colours are really good. Always, always have done. Um, this is all right. It's, it's just, it's okay. Let's move on to New England Revolution then. Uh, so this jersey is a bit more out there, I guess. It's blue with your red um stripes down the middle, but the, the red and white stripes are kind of dotted. Uh, this is their Boston Tea Party jersey. Uh, Poppy um, ignored the fact that they're called New England Revolution. She just went on the England thing and said, is it Tea Party because uh, they're called New England and we like our tea? I then had to explain a bit of American history to her. Um, so we, uh, so she then moved on from that theory and here's what she thought of the rest of the kit. I don't like it. It doesn't look good. I don't like the dots. Because they're basically just stripes. You're pretending that they're not stripes by making them dots, but they're still stripes and I don't like it. It's the only thing we ever agree on. I don't like stripy kits. Uh, not my vibe. I agree. Try to disguise the fact that you've put stripes on the kit by putting dots on it. I don't... I, this doesn't do a lot for me. Uh, so NYCFC then is black uh, with... On one side of it is like a, a sky... Like the well, NYCFC blue, the sky blue... On the Adidas stripes, on the other side is the orange that we've come used to with uh, New York City FC as well. Our friends, uh, the Cooligans, were part of the launch of this shirt, which was great to see. Uh, but would Poppy, well, would she agree with the Cooligans? Does she think it's a smart shirt or does she want to put it in the bin? Here's what she had to say. First of all, my first thought was, it's just a black kit. Black, classic. Yeah, it's great. Then I saw that there were two different colours in the other side. Not my favourite kit, but it's not a 100% no, I hate it. The more I look at it, the less impressive it is. Because I think you glance at it and you think there's some kind of gradient from orange to blue, but there actually isn't. It's just orange on one side and blue on the other. Um, nice idea. Could have been executed better, I think. New York Red Bulls are at a disadvantage because they play in red. And Poppy, of course, doesn't like red kits. They've got kind of lightning bolts all over it. But will she see that as stripes or will she see it as a funky design? Here's what she's had to say. Can we pretend this is not red because I really like it and I take back everything I've said about red kits because it's I really like this. That's so nice. Oh, I'm annoyed at myself. You don't need to be annoyed at me. It's like lightning bolts. Oh, it's just so good. I love it. At this point, she's just trolling me. It's it's awful. Do you think? Yeah. Wow. Okay, I don't think it's that bad. Maybe the uh, maybe the uh, Lewis Hamilton fan in me is coming out, and I just can't even look at the Red Bull logo anymore. But I, I, it's not for me that one. Oh, well, it's Ferrari red. <laughs> Um, right, speaking of trolling you, let's hear then what she thinks of the Orlando City jersey. Of course, we've already spoke about this. It's uh, like a white, um, is that cream, is it? Or is it just white? Is it the picture we're, we're looking at? Is it lavender, apparently? Oh, lavender. All oh, right. Well, actually, if you, now you've said that, that makes sense of what Poppy thought of it. Here's what she thought of Orlando City's away jersey this year. Did Elliot really say that I was going to like this one? Seriously. He should know by now that you can't put whites in with a purple wash. They've put this kit in with last year's kit in the wash. I I agree. I don't. It doesn't do anything for me. Lavender is a nice idea, but you've put it with red. I don't like the old badge. I understand the heritage of it, but it's not nice. That's why they changed it when they joined MLS. Uh, it's yeah, it's poor. 
Right, let's move on to Philadelphia. We've only got Philadelphia and Toronto left to do. So after that, we will find out what her favourite and her least favourite kits are. But Philadelphia, it's their home jersey. You know what you're getting with them. Here's what she's had to say about it. So this really, really reminds me of two things, actually. A really, really chubby screw, like zoomed in, but you'd like hammer into the wall. And those crisps that have the like ripples in them. I think yours, sorry, chips chips um i think yours are called ruffles they're a bit of an american impression during that one as well um a chubby screw and the the crisps with ridges in um now for those who can't see the shirt down the middle it's kind of diamonds and triangles sort of it it, to me it looks more like a tire track down the middle um so i'm really not sure on any of what she said what she means by this one uh, more Doritos, I reckon, than the, the Ridge Chris. But um, what do you think of it? Uh, whatever it is down the middle, I don't hate the idea. It does say bimbo on the front, um, as with all Philadelphia Union uh, jerseys, which is a shame. Uh, and the yellow Adidas. Just actually look at that for a second. The yellow Adidas badge is mm, it's not going well there. Finally, his Toronto FC. Now, this is known as their GTA kit. Um, I mean, what GTA actually stands for is Global Toronto Area, not Grand Theft Auto, which took me and Poppy when looking at it for a while to work out what links to Grand Theft Auto this has. Turns out it has none. So here's what Poppy thought of Toronto's GTA kit, which is white with the sort of red on the, uh, the trims, I guess. So the creator of these shirts, they are so lazy. So lazy. This is the exact same shirt as San Jose and St. Louis. I hope you're listening and I hope you're disappointed in yourself. It's, fair, it's a fair comment. I think the bigger talking point here is that it's a really boring shirt. I couldn't care less about it. Um, I think the, the real talking point here is um, next season when the new GTA comes out, do Miami have the the away jersey as the tommy vassetti green palm tree shirt like that would be incredible right that would be great i I am secretly hoping that miami dropped that at some point but um yeah toronto if they want to do it then any team any any mls team uh which is i will die on the hill as saying vice city is the greatest computer game ever made uh and i would i would buy that shirt whoever it is whichever team even if Wigan Athletic in the in the English <laughs> League One, who are Bolton's rivals, even if they release that shirt, I would be tempted. Yeah, when you go to the pier on Vice City, I don't think it's Wigan Pier. <laughs> um, right, so let's have a, a look then at what Poppy thinks are her favourite and her least favourite jerseys. Um, in terms of least favourite, what going off them, is there any that you feel would get in there? Uh, well, she didn't like Nashville because they copied Columbus, apparently, by being yellow, um, who also copied Norwich. Um, I don't... It's probably Orlando just to troll me, I imagine. Well, funny you say that because she does have a special shout-out for a shirt that she doesn't like. Before I give you my top three worst picks, special shout-out to... I'm so sorry. Orlando, can you please... Figure out how to work a washing machine. I agree. I agree. I agree. I'm I'm sorry, Poppy, we let you down. So as she teased there, a top three is on the way, but I got her actually to record her worst three shirts. So you reckon that Nashville's going to be in there just because it's a Columbus shirt copy and pasted. Here's her worst three shirts of 2024. Coming in number three, it's a joint pick. I know I'm not allowed a joint pick, but when you come out with the same shirt, you've got to expect it. Columbus Crew and Nashville, it's the same top and it's really bad. Coming in, number two is Austin, another team who can't work on washing machine. And in number one, it's Real Salt Lake City. Awful. But I like the mountain. I think it's harsh, harshest on Austin. There's not really much about Austin's. I don't mind Austin's. It's the Austin colours and it's... Yeah, I think it just falls within the plain shirts category and maybe that's where she's gone with. RSL definitely isn't a plain shirt and I'm not surprised actually that she's gone for that for her worst. 
No, I agree. I think uh, also harsh on Columbus and Nashville, who are, you're allowed to be yellow. You got, <laughs> Imagine if every team that just had white or black just disqualified because it's the same as someone else. Let's look at her favorite shirt then. So here's her top three. Um, any any thoughts on what she might put in this? Well, she liked all the ones that I didn't, so I'm prepared to be enraged by this. Wait till you hear this. Here's her top three jerseys, 2024. Here's Poppy's top three picks for 2024. Coming in, number three, Minnesota. I love it. I love that it looks like paint splatters and I love that you can decorate your house while wearing it. Number two is Charlotte. I love the different colours of blue into the white. Love the little ripples. It's a cool shirt. And number one, for the first time ever, I think it's normally in the bottom three, Atlanta, you have smashed it. You have certainly risen from those flames. I'm done. Thanks for listening. (laughs) Thanks for watching. Um, Poppy probably, to be honest, I think it's probably time uh, we didn't have her back next season. Um, (laughs) But thank you. We'd like to thank her for her contributions to the podcast um, over the last five or six years. And um, we wish her the best of luck for the future. (laughs) A few, she genuinely said if we were to ever stop the podcast she would put herself out to other podcasts to see if they wanted a kit review doing other MLS podcasts she's she's mad with power Go get, to be fair for content for this show we should get her to do that hi I um, I review MLS jerseys and I just wondered if you'd like me to be on your podcast but let's do it let's try, let's try and get her out there also it'll cost you 50 quid thanks well, thanks to Poppy for doing the kit reviews once again. Um, go back and listen to previous years because, um, yeah, it's always entertaining and she uh, she has a unique way and I hope you've seen that on these ones. Um, so that's it for this episode. Um, thanks very much for listening. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, remember, if you want to support the podcast, then all you need to do is, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe click the notification bell like this video and comment it gets us more views in the long run so thank you very much and if you're listening on your podcast provider please leave us a rating leave us a review but if you are going to leave us a rating there's one rule and one rule only five stars only la galaxy style we'll be back next time looking back at the latest weekend of mls action but until then i've been henry hewitt and i've been elliot holman See ya.